Hello all, Stimation, and welcome back to some more Shovel Knight. In the last episode, we took care of the very first, um, Tower of Fate stage. And really quickly, before we start the second one, I want to go and... Wrong place. I want to go and refill my I-Cores. Yeah, the game kind of punished me for that, um, last time. Since Black Knight was a pain. Er, sorry. So I'm gonna get two healing ones. And now we can carry on onto the second stage, which was the Tower of Fate Ascent. Strike the earth, you bet I will. And so for the Tower of Fate Ascent, we are going down. Isn't that fitting? And now we are reusing all the old gimmicks we didn't get a chance to revisit in the last stage. So we have spikes. Er, uh, no, we have the platforms from Treasure Knight stage along with some of his fish enemies. Along with one of my favorite tracks in the game. But again, this game's music is totally awesome, so that shouldn't surprise you. And yeah, I need to focus on not jumping into spikes. That would help. Okay. Don't trust myself. But apparently I should've, because that was fine anyway. Okay. Random pause there, something came up. And carrying on. So now I have the Clockwork and Mice from Tinker Knight Stage, along with some of his platforms. Thankfully, they don't seem to be um, revisiting the worst parts of that stage. And you can just jump in lava. I won't stop you if you want to. Want a hot tub bath? I will join you. Apparently, the checkpoint is a red gem. Don't break it. Don't break it. Don't break it. It's valuable, but it needs its life. Even valuable things deserve to live. Okay. You go in the hot tub. I'm gonna click my gold. We also appear to have um, Tinker Knight's Knight variant. And now we have the gimmick from Mole Knight stage, which are the lava slimes along with the normal slimes. Constantly swapping between the two. I just want to get off the screen. I don't feel safe fighting them all on breakable blocks. So let's go ahead and move down. Thank god that doesn't instant break. Ah, now for the gimmick from Polar Knight stage, which was this weird statue thing. And apparently you can ram it into enemies to murder them. I didn't actually know that. Alright, now it's not working. Come on. Come on up. Shield me. Attack. Oh, I see you up there. I see you up there. I'm not happy about it. I'm just gonna let you go into the pit, actually. Speaking of pits, now I have to go across one here. And now I have to time it really well to get past these two cauldrons. Get across! There we go. That could have been bad. And now they put one of you here, really. So this next part of the stage is pretty much just timing the statue thing, has through a bunch of obstacles. It's a lot easier than it, well, it's a lot more difficult than it, it's really difficult, let's just put it that way. The checkpoint is a purple gem, don't break it, don't break it, valuable things deserve life, valuable things deserve life. I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen. Onward. And this looks like it could be broken, but apparently not. That would have made my life so much easier. Yeah, 
You can go away. I don't like you. And I don't particularly like this guy either, so I'm going to take him out from a distance. Okay. Now I just find these things. Because even when your timing is good, there's a very high chance you may end up falling into the pit anyway. Just by virtue of missing the platform. Okay, I have a feeling Flare One's gonna be better for taking these guys out. I don't like you. Go away! Damn it. And wait a second. Okay, there was a chicken there. I didn't actually see that the first two times. Okay. I don't technically need to use a magic on you, I could just ram you with a platform, but it's more fun hitting you with fire. And that was very satisfying. Don't stip- you did the fa- <laughs> Feel like I am now discovering part of the reason I hate Polar Knight stage and I hate his gimmicks. This is probably gonna be the most difficult part of this level for me though, just cause I'm terrible at using everything involved with Polar Knight. Is bad, blame it on the knight himself. Get down here. And by get down here, I mean get down in the bottom of pit so I don't have to deal with you. Alright, that's how I need perfectly. Murder you guys perfectly. You weren't so bad. It's your friend I'm worried about. Alrighty. Let's go. It's a very narrow getting through. Now you, I just want to spam. There we go. Alright. It seems like he's the last one. There's one of your song scrolls. And yes, I did just walk on air. Okay, now for the proper revisit part of Tinker Knight stage, we have his conveyor belts here. Along with the clower or the tower climb. And just when I said it didn't simulate the worst parts of his stage. Or emulate rather. Um oh there's a platform where I couldn't see it. Oh god. This one makes me feel even more unsafe. And I missed a uh, song scroll there, but never mind. You know, here they pretty much expect you to use Dust Neckle in order to break those things fast enough. Which is totally fine. Gives the relic some use right before the end of the game. Okay. Now have to be careful in order to clear my path so I don't get, squ or don't get squished. That would not be good. This background looks like some kind of Plague Knight stage, but we're not going to mention that. Because originality points in this stuff. Alright. We're nearing the top of the tower now. We can break this wall to get a free chicken. And another chicken. And another chicken. And a bomb! So whatever's in those plates, it's completely randomized. It can either be chicken, carrots, apples, and bombs, I think. One last checkpoint. Gonna swap over for the flare wand. Now we go down. Ho oh, ho, now this, this is rich. Who let this peasant in here to spoil our sumptuous supper? Hardly surprised you've yet again set foot where you don't belong. We should punish you. You're in deep now. We want a rematch. My new plans have no flaws. You can't win this time. A battle royale, then. Marvelous. It will go first. Hm. <laughs> Fast assault. Time for a boss rush. So as you can see, we're fighting Polar Knight first. The order you fight them in is randomized. But we've got stuck in with the Polar Knight first, which I'm fine with. I'd like to take you out early if I can. 
So one thing I didn't actually do during the, during the actual boss fight, you can bounce around on his um, snowballs while he's sending them out at you. Though it doesn't help with that much. So just a little bit of a note here, I'm also not going to be trying to serious, or seriously the first time here, because as you saw when I entered, my magic wasn't totally full. And full magic is something I would like to have while doing these boss fights. I will still give an attempt. Oh man, you're a pain. Alright, Polar Knight's down. King Knight will throw you a chicken after you've defeated one of the knights, so you do have a chance to refill afterwards. And now Tinker Knight. You're a ridiculous boss, Tinker Knight. The falling over thing just makes me... Sh really makes me quake with fear. Okay. Tinker Knight's down. Or so you fought. Dinner's ready. Okay. Now to deal with his mech form. Now this is probably going to be a little bit tricky for me since I have the charge shot on. Or I might end up falling off just by accidentally charging and then lose my movement when I need it most. Hopefully that won't happen though and I'll be able to stay up on his head for the majority of the boss fight. Yeah, because the charge shot just doesn't help out as much as it seems like it would here. Okay. And had to fall down just at the best time for me to be getting up was. Okay. So the Knight boss fight as usual. It's not too difficult, it's basically just tedious since he has two forms. And managed to hit him right when I was about to fall off him, that was a good ending. Alright, now for Spectre Knight, my personal favorite. And he makes two platforms appear, so you can fight him with your normal strategy. Of course, due to the lack of me having a flame on, this might be a little bit more difficult, but probably not by much. Alrighty. He's one of the few bosses that the, um, the charge shot can actually be pretty useful against. If you're using the strategy, you basically just stick to this platform and keep him in that corner. Then the charge shot, you don't have to do the, uh, you don't have to do too much moving, so it can be helpful to charge it up and use it. It's a lot of hassle just for that extra hit point of damage, so I don't think I'll be using it that much. I'm pretty confident my abilities just to take this guy out fine anyway. Okay, kill it for zombies. Okay, when it's down free elf, we'll turn off the lights in the room. Thankfully, you can still have a bit of light thanks to the torches at the top of the room and the window in the back. So it's still not impossible to tell where he is. The zombie that's running around on the ground floor can be a little bit difficult to spot due to all the other sprites of the knights, but overall, Spectre Knight is not that bad. Okay, now for Propeller Knight. His fight's made a lot easier by virtue of the fact his, um, when he sends in his battleship, because yes, the windows in this room are here for a reason, when he sends in his ship, he cannot destroy the ground and create bombless pits anymore. It's pretty much limited just to firing out mini bombs, as you'll see here. The issue of instant death is completely taken away, and now it's just a little bombage you have to worry about. Which obviously are not that bad. Since they are not instant kill. You'll as you really see here, once you get rid of the factor of instant death, Power Knight's really an easy boss. Without a stage, he's just not he's not too bad. 
Ah, but this will certainly be now for Treasure Knight. Oh god. This is the one boss fight I was worried about here, and now it's time for it. If I can get past this, I should be good, because I can see the three I have left, and I don't think I'm going to struggle particularly with any of them. Plague Knight might give me a little bit of issues, but he shouldn't be that bad, so it's just Treasure Knight now. Judge Knight and Polar Knight were the two I was really worried about, for those wondering. And I've got a pretty good position here, well now it's gone, oh god. Okay. He's down now for a Mole Knight, okay. This fight's not so bad as long as you pay attention to what he's doing. One thing's gonna kill you in this fight, if anything, is gonna be when you start sending out the blocks that you can wrap succession, because if you don't break them in time, you're gonna get crushed. Okay, which one are you hiding in is this one. I hit you with your own lava drop, that was awesome. And also as the fight starts to progress, he starts speeding up, which can also be an issue. Okay. Again, as long as you keep her cool, it's not too bad. And Plague Knight just did some sort of weird thing with his wine glass there, that looks kind of interesting. Okay. Break away out of the house, and now he's going really fast. I always seem to get hit by this guy right at the end of the boss fight, but whatever. Okay, now for King Knight. King Knight unfortunately kind of feels like a joke compared to the rest of the group. Since he is pretty much the first boss of the game, his attacks are just really light luster compared to what everyone else can do. And as such, he should give you little to no trouble. Kinda feels out of place in this boss rush because of that reason. Okay. You obviously have to be careful for the confetti when he does his trumpet attack, but overall he's not that bad. Still managed to get hit on me, but whatever. Okay. And now with him down, it's time to deal with Plague Knight. Please be a good birdie. I'm going to try and knock his potions back, because I really do not want him to get off the ground sparks as often as he was in the actual boss fight. But as I said in the actual boss fight, it takes really good precision aiming to actually be able to knock them out of the sky. As I failed with that one, and is that going to set off the, um, flask? No, it's not. Okay. And as I said in his actual stage, the main reason this boss fight is so frantic is just because everything is constantly changing. Thankfully, he's also lost something that he had previously, which was the fact he had flooring in his ground that was constantly changing and making his jumps unpredictable and that kind of thing. He loses that here, so he's not as bad as he actually was before. Have you ever wondered in a video game when you knock a boss and it falls off the edge what actually happens? This should hopefully explain your question. Boy, Knight, you look kind of ridiculous up there on the front. Give us a hand, Shovel Knight. You wouldn't leave us to hang here, would you? And yes, you can actually help them all up. Okay. There are substantial inadequacies in my hydraulic ac actuators. Considerable iteration is warranted. Ah, how invigorating, how uplifting. If all your quest is this fun, I should go with you. I may not have your strength, but I am still far more clever, so watch out. I meant what I said. You should still join us. <laughs> My feet is in no concern. The Enchantress cannot be stopped by any mere mortal. Also interesting fact, you'll notice after you defeated Spectre Knight, he loses his little um, robe or, co or cape thing. I have to answer you. You have a superior digging technique. We should share notes. No amount of wealth is worth the heartache that awaits you. Good luck, doomed hero. My, My castle. My luxury. My fiefdoms. My... My chandeliers! Curse you, Shovel Knight! I knew he'd be upset about those. And again, with the random pauses, I have no idea what's up with those. But that... Is it. That was Shovel Knight, everybody. We beat the game. Uh, yeah. 
So we still have one more final fate, or final stage, which is the Tower of Fate. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Oh god, another question mark, question mark. So, next time we're Knight, we're entering the final stage of the game and taking care of the Enchantress. So I shall see you guys then.